Hi, this is Joe Bolin, and welcome to learning about VisualBasic.net. In this video, we're going to look at using a database in our project. We're going to use what's called a local DB database. In the last video, we actually created that local DB. We detached it, and I put it in a special uh, folder on my hard drive. And we're going to bring that into our project, learn how to code with it using ADOs.net's rapid development tools and we'll see how to do a master uh, detail table type relationship sometimes it's called parent-child relationship on how to process the data and the records in these tables so let's get to first of all looking at where our documentation is so that uh, once we're done with the video you can go back out and take a look at the code and see in more detail with comments what I did in the video. So let me show you the documentation first of all. And what I want to refer you to first of all is back to video uh, number 66, databases, create an MS local DB database. And in that video, you see how I created a local uh, DB database. Uh, also, you'll see from that video, the link to Pastebin, where the information about how I set up that database was. So do, uh, if you have jump started and gone right into this video, take a look at that first um, so you'll have an understanding of how to create the database. Now we're also going to uh, refer you to the screen that will be used in this video. Uh, it's stored out there so you can see the image uh, on that if you'd like to read, uh, do the code and try it yourself. Also the code is at pastebin uh, for this video. And it has also extra comments so you can see what I was doing and remember uh, the video and the process on that. And then other videos, of course, are out at uh, YouTube at Bullen Presents. So you might want to pause your video at this point in time and write down those URL links uh, so that afterwards you can take a look at the code and study it in more detail at your own leisure. So let's go now into our project. We're going to go to Visual Studio. And I'm going, I'm at the start page, and I'm going to hit the new project option, and we're going to create a Windows uh, Classic Desktop uh, Windows Form application. I'm using the .NET Framework 4.6, but it could be an older one if you'd like. Uh, this is the one that's current at the time of my recording this video. And we're going to call this particular application ADO, lowercase net, master detail maintenance okay hit the okay button and visual studio is busy away working to create our code and form now one of the first things i want to do is go to the solution explorer here uh, where i have my form one um, and i'm going to make it a meaningful descriptive name by right clicking and hitting rename and calling it main form there we go it's now rename main form and I'm going to come over here now and click on the form once and select it and you'll see main form in my property list I'm going to change the text on that in fact I'll slide this over so you can see it I'm going to call this um, uh, ado.net master detail maintenance there we go and that becomes part of our caption up there one of the other things I'm going to do is come up and change the font there's the font there's the little ellipsis button I'm going to click on the ellipsis button the font dialog will come up and I'm going to change it to Sego UI Sego UI is the font family that Microsoft recommends for Windows Forms to use the font style of regular and the font size of nine points. So Microsoft recommends for Windows Forms, Sego UI, regular nine point. Okay, that changed our form a little bit. I'm also going to change the form in terms of its size in general. I can use the sizing handles, but I'm going to jump down to the properties of the size and change it to a relationship that most monitors have we use 640 by 320 
That way, if the user drags the form in a proportional relationship of diagonally dragging it, it will fit their form pretty well. Okay, so I've got that set. Let me bring this back a little bit. Now, I also have the little red dot. It tells me I haven't saved it yet, so I'm going to hit the uh, Save All. And it's going to ask for a location. Make sure an ADO uh, Net Master D Detail Maintenance is selected. And the solution name is the same. I'm going to put it in my project directory. So I hit save. And I've got everything saved. And the little red dot has gone away from my tab. At this point, I want to uh, work with the um, data source. Uh, so I'm going to come over here to the data source on my left side. If you do not see this on your left side, come up to view and you'll see it as an option as you come down and look for other windows. You'll find it. Okay, I'm going to click on data source and I'm going to say add new data source. And we're going to be bringing in the database. So I'm going to click on database and then hit next. And I'm going to be using a data set, which is an internal area in memory to hold our tables. And I'm going to go new connection on that. Now for this, since we're working with local DB, I've got to give it the server name. Uh, in this case, it's local in DB in parentheses. DB, like that, and then backslash, and then I say MS SQL local DB. Now, if you have uh, a version of the server, uh, for example, Microsoft Server 2012, you would put in there instead of uh, MS SQL local DB, you would put in B11 period zero. So it's B11 period zero for 2012's version of the server. But I'm using the more current one, of which now they've kept it as a constant name. Now I'm going to attach the database, which is sitting out on my U drive. I'm going to hit attach, and then I'm going to hit the browse button. And there's my sample DB that I want to bring in. So I'm going to click on that. It's located out right now in my U drive, or we detached it before. And I'm going to give it a logical name just of uh, sample DB to work with it. Then I'm going to hit the test connection button, which is maybe it's off screen for you. And we'll see the test work fine. I've got a good connection to that database. And then I'm going to hit the OK button to close out the add connection. OK, we have our connection. And there is our connection string going out to the U drive. And then I'm going to hit Next. And it's going to give me a nice little dialog saying, do I want to bring this into my project as a copy? And yes, I do. I'm going to leave the one that's out on the U drive alone. I want to bring in a copy of it into my project. So I'm going to hit Yes. At that point, the uh, give me a connection string, and I'll say next. And we'll see our options for the things to bring in. And I want to bring in the tables. There are no views, stored procedures, or functions. And there are two tables, the master or parent table customers and the detail or child table orders. I'm going to just select here to bring those in. And I'm going to bring it into a data set named sample DB data set. Finish. Okay, and now I see everything over here on the side. And I'm going to right now pin that. We're going to come back to that in a minute. But now I want to come over and we're going to change the resolution a little bit here so I have some more uh, real estate. And I'm going to come over here to the uh, actual definition of what we brought in. So I'm going to double click on this one and you'll see that we have our two tables defined. We see our table adapters, our uh, order uh, right here, the methods of the fill and get data, and also we see our primary keys. And you'll see that uh, the customer ID is here and also a customer ID is in the orders table. And in between is a relationship. And I'm going to click on this little spot in between. And then I'm going to left click to do an edit relationship. Right now, we just have a relationship only. 
but this is a parent-child type of situation. And you'll see that I have the parent-child customers and the child table orders. And the link between them uh, is the customer ID and the parent child, and the foreign key is the same name in the orders file. I want to change the relationship to both relation and foreign key constraints. In other words, I do not want to end up with an orphaned child. And any changes I make on the master should also reflect in the child uh, records. So I'm going to hit both relation and foreign key constraints. Then I'm going to come over here to the update rules, and I want to have that happen as a cascade effect on both the update and the delete. So if I were to delete uh, a record out of the parent table, all the child records related to that parent would also be deleted as well. And so those are the things we need to set. We need to switch this from relation only to uh, both relation and foreign key constraint. And then we also want to change our uh, rules of how we update and delete. Let's we'll say OK. At this point, I've got a little red button here telling me I have, need to save it. I'm going to hit Save. And I'm going to come over to my project. And I'm going to right click and hit Build. And that'll take everything we've done and rebuild it and get it set so that things in the data source window will be right. So I'm going to close this out now. Now, we're over here at the data source area, and we're going to drag this in onto our form in a minute. The default is to bring those in as data grid views. Well, I'm going to bring the customer in in a detailed view. So what I'm going to do is click over here and change that with the drop down. And you'll see the data grid view or details. I'm going to hit details. Now, I do want to show you something else. Uh, if I click on the little uh, triangle on the side, I want you to see that there are two orders. There's the orders as children of the parent. And then I can retrieve orders outside of the parent on that. We do not want to work with this part of our uh, area in the data source. We're only interested in the parent-child relationship. So make certain that when you do select the orders, you're selecting the one within the customers and not uh, down below. Okay, I've got this set for uh, bringing it in detail. The other thing I'm going to change is the phone number. Uh, I'm going to make this a mass text box. So I'm going to come to the phone number, hit the drop down, and change it to mass text box. There we go. Now I'm just going to drag this over onto my form and release. And Microsoft is going to create a lot of nice things for me real quickly. Um, it brought in the labels for my different fields. It also then brought in text boxes for those fields. It brought in a navigation bar to work against the customer table. Uh, a couple of things I want to do is I do not want to let the user change the customer ID. So one of the first things I'm going to do is highlight the text box for the customer ID. And I'm going to change view here a little bit. And we're going to look at the property of that. And what I want to do is change the customer text box and change it so that it is read only and then set as true. Let me come down to read only. And right now it's false. I'm going to make it true so the user cannot change the data. And it grayed it out. But it will show the information. And then also I want to eliminate the tab stop and make that false. Okay, we've done that. Then the phone number. I'm going to come to the phone number. Click on the text box. In this case, it's a phone mask text box. I'm going to go to the mask properties. There's the mask. And there's the little ellipsis button. And it brings up a dialog box. And since it's a phone number, I'm going to take the one that shows the area code. And it'll make it easier for the user to enter in data for the phone number. Okay, we've got it okay. You see our little mask text box showing up. And we've got everything here. Now the name and contact look a little small. So I'm going to select on the first one and then hold down the control key and select the next one. And then I'm going to stretch these out a little bit, give them a little bit more room for somebody to enter in information and then release. Okay. Now, let's talk about some of the things. I'm going to hide this for a minute on the data source. Um, 
we have some things that have happened during that process of dragging and dropping. Uh, first of all, I got a sample DB data set uh, brought into the component tray down here. I also got a customer binding source. Now, the binding source's task is to link up with the controls on the GUI interface, the form, and link it to the internal table um, that we're working with. In this case, it's working with the customer table that it, it's processing. You'll see over here, as you look at the properties of that customer binding source, you'll see that it's using the sample DB data set and using the customer table on that. And that's the name of our binding source for that one. Also, we have a customer table adapter. Now, the adapter's task is to communicate between the database and the internal table in our data set. So it's going to retrieve data from the database and put it in the customer table in our data set. It's also going to take any changes or deletes that we have in the customer table in our data set and push it into the database on that. And then we also have uh, a customer binding navigator. This is the part up here that makes it easy for me to move through the different records in the table on that. And we'll use that in a little bit, so I'm going to leave that there. Then we have a table adapter manager. And the table adapter manager's responsibility is to control all the different tables in terms of how they process the data. And we'll look at that in a second. So these are the components that brought in when I did the drag and drop. I got everything set here. Now let me show you. I can right click and go to uh, view code or hit F7. Or I can come up here and click on this to see the code behind our form. So I'm just going to uh, hit view code. And I'm going to change this a little bit so we can see it. And the system has already processed some stuff for us. And I'm going to uh, come in here and clean it up just a little bit. So it's a little bit easier to read and it doesn't wrap so far. Uh, I'm going to put what's called a continuation line. Then underscore, and then I'm going to hit enter. It makes it a little easier to read and white space is fine to have. I'm going to do that also for the uh, load form part. Put that in right there, underscore, hit the enter key. And then I'm going to get rid of this comment. This came in automatically. All this was done by the rapid development of the thing. So we're now bringing in with a fill, um, going out the database and filling on our load and pulling it into the customer table in our data set. Then when we do a save using the little navigator's little save button, go to validate our data, it's going to then end the binding uh, or take the binding source and flush um, anything that's on my screen uh, to the uh, table, making certain everything's there in the table, and then perform an update all on that uh, using the um, any table that's within uh, our table adapter manager's uh, configuration. Uh, so everything's there. I am going to do a little relocation here just to make it a little logical uh, more so. I'm going to take this and cut it with a control X or highlight it. Control X to cut it and I'm going to put it below just so it seems a little bit more logical to you that first of all we're going to load the form and then we're going to come down and do the save. Okay I'm going to hit a um, save all. I'm going to change the side a little here so you can see it. Watch this. Um, in a minute I'm going to show you also uh, we need to do one other thing but I'm going to get you started first. Start. Okay, and there we go. We've got the customer table, and we can move through that and do editing. We'll be able to add things and save. I'm going to hold off for a minute because I want to show you something. Uh, one of the things we need to do is take a look at how we're working with this database. So I'm going to close this out. I'm going to come back uh, to our solution explorer, and I'm going to st stretch this a little bit. And uh, as I come down here, I'm going to click on show all files and when I did that compile you'll see in the bin folder in the debug you'll find that I do have the sample DB database it's been copied in there 
Now, let me come on down here. And there it is when we first started out. It was in our, my main area of my project. Now, right now it's set to copy always. So every time I compile this program, it's going to take the um, root area of my project, take this database, and copy it into the working directory. In this case, it's going to be copying it into the uh, bin debug folder. Uh, but if I want to see those changes that I might make between times I compile, I need to set the uh, database down here to, instead of copy always, which is the default, to copy if newer. So I'm going to change that quality right there on that. And this time, uh, it'll copy only if I do any modifications here. Uh, if I don't do any modifications to this particular database, it will then uh, not copy to the working directory. Or if I delete it out of the bin folder, if I did, were to delete this out, it would copy it in as well. So it'll either way, it'll be there for me to run. And this is right now my working directory since I'm doing a debug version of this program. Okay, let me do a save all. Now, it brought in a lot of code for me and got everything pretty much ready for me to run, but I still want to work with the details. And once again, uh, just to remind you, we have in our data uh, set diagram here, we've got the relationship set so that we have a cascading deletes occurring. Okay. Now let's go back. Now let's go back to our form. I'm going to change this a little bit. I'm going to drag this down just a little bit. I'll we'll go to the data source again and pin it. And I don't want to work with down here. I want to work with the relationship, which in this case is the orders underneath. And here are the orders. And I'm going to now make certain I choose the data grid view. And I'm going to drag it onto my form and release. And there's the data grid view. And I'm going to just do a little positioning, get things set here. Um, there we go. And I'm going to bring this up a little bit there. And I'm going to bring this inside a little bit there. Okay. I'm going to highlight the uh, data grid. And I want to bring also to your attention now, I've got also an orders um, binding source down below here, as well as um, uh, things have been changed to my table adapter manager. So let's go back and, and make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. And I want to show you the table adapter manager. There it is. That just right. There we go. And now you'll see the table manager has the customer table adapter in it, as well as it has the orders table adapter in it. And both of these use a clear before fill so that the internal memory is cleared out before it pulls it in from the database. And it also takes control of how it does its updates. It does inserts first, then it does updates, and then it does delete. So it takes care of making certain everything is processed correctly. So the table adapter does a lot of nice work for us and saves us a lot of time. Okay, uh, let's go back here and now let's modify our a grid. I'm pretty much done now with using the data source uh, screen here, so I'm going to hide it. I'm going to come uh, now and look at my data grid view, and I'm going to click on it. Make certain it's in my properties area, and I'm going to look at the properties of the data grid view. Well, first of all, I'm going to slide down, and I'm going to change um, to uh, the allow user to order columns, I'm going to make that true. That way the user can uh, uh, move the columns around as he likes in the data grid view. Then I'm going to go to alternating rows, default cell style. Uh, these are the alternating rows. And what I want to do is make it contrast. So I clicked on the little ellipsis button there. I'm going to go to the background, hit the drop down here, go to the web. And I'm going to use the uh, color of white smoke, which is just a little bit different shade of white uh, for the alternating row. Hit OK. 
Then I'm going to anchor the grid so it's anchored on all sides so that as the form changes in size, it'll grow with the form. So I've got that set. Then I'm going to come on down here again and auto size column mode. This one I'm going to make display cells on that. There we go. And the border style, we'll make it the fixed 3D just to make it a little bit more interesting to look at. And let me come on down here. Um, we can't come into the collection. I'm going to come in a little bit differently. But this is one way to come in as we do the editing of the columns. You'll see my binding source is there uh, being attached to the data source of the grid. And that pretty well sets us uh, on that. I'm going to allow multi select on that uh, on the uh, how they select uh, on that so they can set more than one um, uh, row at a time to process so we've got everything set there now i'm going to come up to the columns collection and i'm going to come in by the smart gif on that and uh, you'll see here i've already got everything set here i'm uh, allowing them to add and that's why we'll see the uh, some of the things set differently we hit edit columns. Now what I want to do is I'm going to put the customer ID first because it's going to be the one that sort of drives things. Normally in a production we wouldn't show these, uh, but I want you to see them as we run through it. Now the customer ID, I do not want the user to change. So I'm going to go to the uh, area of um, where it has a read only. And I'm going to change that to uh, true. So the user cannot change the customer ID. And uh, I'm going to make certain that order ID is also that, which it is. Now I'm going to come back up and we're going to edit the text that's displayed in our data grid view. So I'm going to put a space in between customer and ID to make it a little bit user friendly. Come down to the order ID, do it for the header text. Make certain you don't do it for the property down here. You want to do it for the header text. Order date, I'm going to do that as well. Now, order date, I'm going to format as well. So I'm going to come up here to the default style. Click on the little ellipsis button. On that will give me the dialog. And what I want to do is change the format. And it actually is going to be a short date time I'm going to select. So I'm going to hit the little ellipsis button on the format. And it's going to give me the option to go for date time. And I'm going to use the short date time, which is this format. Now we could put others in there, but I'm going to use that. Let's say OK. And that gives me the little D for short date and time. We could also change the alignment if we wanted to. I'll do that just for fun. And I'm going to make it uh, middle right. So it's on the right side of the uh, column. There we go. Hit OK. And then I'm going to come down to order quantity. And put a little space in that text. And we'll just leave that as is say okay so we got everything set there okay i'm going to hit save all to make certain everything's safe now let's go back in and look at our code on this particular one and i'm going to hit the um, area to come back to our code oh i see a little thing that happened here we got the little comment popped in the wrong spot for us here let me change that get that out of there and uh, it actually put that whole line in the wrong area now one of the things that will do incorrectly is put the orders in front of the customers and this is one thing we do need to change so I'm going to hit control X to cut it out and then I'm going to paste it below it on that and let me delete a couple of blank spaces here and we should have uh oh i see we've got it in there twice now and i'll get that extra one out there we go so we want to make certain the order is correct we want to have the customer master table or parent table first then the child or parent uh, details table second in how it loads into our system also because we're now uh, allowing ourselves to edit both the master and detail 
we also want to do it in edit before we save. So I'm going to do ME orders binding source on that. And I'm going to do an in edit there. Okay. And that takes care of that. And I hardly did any code at this point. Just had to do a few little modifications on that. So I'm going to save all right at this point. Now let's go back to the designer. And one of the things I want to bring to your attention is we're editing here. And then before I hit the save, I may go down to the grid and do some uh, work as well. Well, as I come down here, I want to make certain that everything up here in the master table, the parent table, uh, the any changes I might have made here are pushed into the table with the end edit as well before I come down here and start working. Uh, because of this relationship between these two tables, I need this committed to the table before I process anything down here. So let's go back to our uh, form. And I'm going to go uh, put my cursor down here uh, and give some space for it. And then I'm going to come up here and go to find the component. In this case, I'm looking for the orders uh, data grid view right there, selecting it. And then I'm going to go to the event for it. And in this case, I'm going to go to the enter event on that. And I'm going to scroll down. And there's the enter event. So as I bring my mouse in there and enter into the data grid, uh, I'm going to do a uh, end edit. So I'm going to do a little continuation mark change here. Underscore in there. And now I'm going to come down and add ME uh, customer um, binding source and edit. There we go. And that does the same thing. Okay, we've got everything set. Look how few lines of code I have here. Uh, the first one came in automatically when I started out. I did have to change the order of where the orders table occurred. So it came after the customer table. Uh, but then I also had to add only the extra end edit for the details uh, to the code and a special handling uh, to make certain that the uh, end edit occurs on the binding source if I move into the data grid. So that's all it takes there. I'm going to get rid of this extra white space up here. There we go. Hit save all. I'm going to change the presentation a little bit and let's run the program. And there we go. Now, we've got our navigator up here to move through the records, and we chose to show the customer ID, which we wouldn't normally do, but uh, here we see the customer ID appears in the master table, and in the detail area, it also appears. And as I scroll through the master table, uh, this will change, and we'll get the corresponding orders that exist with each of those. So as I move forward, there is the customer ID is the same, one order out there. Move on to the third record, and uh, there's also information. Now I can also come in, let's say in the middle here, and I'm going to hit the delete key. And I've deleted it out there, and then I hit the save, to commit the changes. And uh, I'll show you. I'm going to close out the program, restart it. And because we had copy if newer, I'm going to go to that last record. It's deleted out of there. Now, let's try and add. So I'm going to do hit the add button on that. It gives me a brand new uh, series of records. I'm going to put in uh, Bowling Computers. If I can get my fingers on the right keys. This is a fictitious company, by the way. And I'll put my name in. And we'll put a fictitious phone number. There we go. Now, I'm, uh, instead of hitting save right away, I'm just going to come on down and hit the order date. Notice I got a negative value on all those. This will happen automatically when we're working with a, uh, Microsoft SQL. So I'm going to enter in the date. I'll um, put in 5.22.2000. 
uh, 16, tab out, put in a quantity of 250, and as I tab out, I have committed that row. I'm ready for another row. I'm going to hit save, and we'll see that go in there and save it. And just to show you it's saved, I'll close out the program. I'll restart the program. I'll go to our last record, which was uh, at the end here. And there I am with my one order that I just did. Um, if I delete out this record here, uh, instead of having this selection, I put my cursor there and hit the delete. Uh, all this will go away because of that cascading delete. There, it's gone. Now you won't see any record in the fourth slot. We only have three records out there now. Let's go back to the beginning here, to the first record. Let's add a record here. I'm going to put in uh, 8 dot, uh, oh, let's say 25 dot uh, 2015. And uh, put in uh, another quantity of 250 for that person. And then I'm going to uh, come back to the first one. And I'm going to delete that record out there. Now I'm going to hit save, and uh, we'll stop it. I'll restart it, and you'll see that all those changes I did have been made. I deleted out a record there. Uh, I added a record there, and everything's there. And I don't have the Bullen computers record at all out there. So everything's being maintained perfectly, and that's exactly what we want to do in this program. So there you go. Very little code. Uh, the rapid access uh, ability uh, to de deploy this is uh, there. Uh, we added just a few lines of code. This is all out at Pastebin, by the way. Just to remind you, uh, you can go out to Pastebin and take a look at this. Uh, all the information is there at Pastebin. So uh, go back out and take a look at the code that I did. Review the video again. Also, if you haven't created your local DB or have a database to work with, uh, choose that. Now, just because I had a parent-child relationship, I had to do some special editing in the designer part, uh, which we did. But uh, that gets you all set. Just remember, if I do have that special relationship and I'm working with more than one table, uh, I want to come in to the designer area of my uh strongly type set and I want to edit that relationship which we did we clicked on it we edited it and we changed that relationship so that we'd have all the constraints and cascading that we needed to have happen for that okay well that does this for this particular video the next video I'm going to bring out is going to use the same database and we're going to learn how to use entity framework which is the newer version of the way things are being done it cuts down a lot of code. You saw I did very little here with the ADO.net with the strongly typed data set. Uh, and you're working with those internal tables that are strongly typed. The code was pretty much done for me by Microsoft. And the Visual Studio uh, inter integrated development environment did that work for me. I just did a little touch up and polish to make it look good. So keep your... Uh, Eyes out at uh, Bullen Presents for new videos. Try out this example and get your hands dirty in the code and take care.